This is Unrendered on IKTV. I'm Tony Regisford, and I'm chatting with Reds Pereira. Reds, um, we're talking about the book, and I said I was going to ask you categorically, what were your dreams? Well, I always had a dream of doing something with my life. Mm -hmm. And that doing something wasn't getting rich or making money. Um, I had a feeling that people were important, you know, that, that people were important. And that um, sport, however, had a relationship with helping people. And um, I thought sport was a great platform. For, for, for development of the human personality, yes. whether he, the person was rich or poor, I think. And my football teams, and a long, bef a long time before Jesse Jackson, when he talked about rainbow and all that, mm. my teams were all rainbow teams. They came from the the dung, the salt of the earth, salt of the earth, yes. right? It came from Tiger Bay. It came from the upper legends of society, mm -hmm. doctors, sons, mm. but. You know, th th that was my thing. Yes. They, they truly, truly a mixture. Yes, yes. The, the, the great mix, you know. Yes. And whilst I did that, um, the whole development, I, I had this idea that, you know, I, I wouldn't mind being able to one day become a commentator and listened, learned a lot, you know. I l listened. I, I went to Trinidad in 1956 on a boat, mm -hmm. a rice boat, to watch the 56, 57 trials, I saw Frank Mason. And he was the, the fast bowler then. Fast bowler the then. Yes. Wesley Hall got in before him because maybe he was a little younger. Mm. But Wesley was wild. Frank was a lot more accurate. Mm. There was a Dominican called Reed. Michael Finley will know him. Brilliant. Should have gone. But they used Kanai as the second keeper and Alexander. And in fact, Kanai started the tour. But as such was my interest, that I went to Trinidad to watch the trials. Mm -hmm. I went back in 57 to watch the Pakistan test match. Um, you know, I remember today, Kanai getting 96. Mm -hmm. you, know. Um, you know, it was, it was part of, of trying to be positive, trying to, to make the breakthrough. But, you know, there was that lid of the stammering. Which, which really which you eventually over overcome, you, you, yeah. you overcame. Yeah, the, the the whole thing about your commentary, I mean, that has made you famous. Certainly, you know, people of a certain generation. Anyway, you also had an official job as being the sports coordinator for the OECS. Uh, what period was that? Nineteen eighty-four, September one. On December 15, 1996. So that's over a 10 year um, tenure. Closer to, to 12. Yeah, more, more closely to 12. And of course, you continued doing commentary during that um, yes, period. Yes, yes. Um, but I, wa I want to say outset that, you know, we talk about insularity. Mm. Here was a, a non OECS born person given that opportunity and it was a challenge and uh, you know I, I i am very grateful for the opportunity given they didn't have to what 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 was the responsibility of the desk of the oecs coordinator well it was a, coordinator. it was a brand new desk there was yes. nothing to follow no precedent no mm -hmm. and uh, you know the, the unesco paid for the first year for the running of the desk mm -hmm. but unesco didn't give me a hundred thousand dollars a seed money to, to kick off. Mm -hmm. 84, September, not a, a lot of time left in the year. Uh, bear this in mind, Tony, that there were two CARICOM sports people prior to the creation of, of the OECS yeah. sports desk. Yeah. And not a lot happened for the OECS countries. A lot of visits, a, a lot of meetings, a lot of writing, but no action. The people in seeing X, Y happening on the ground. And I was under maybe a little bit of, of pressure to deliver. 
And if one year in the job I could not deliver, I was going to bow out because mm -hmm. I didn't want to stay in a thing where only yeah. me benefiting and, and is not yes, happening. But, yes. but this is where the cricket came in. The cricket helped me a great deal because of being known um, as a commentator. Uh, you will open your door and give me a hearing simply because you might like cricket, might like me as a commentator. The other good reason is that the Director General, then Dr. Vaughan Lewis, gave me a free hand. Mm -hmm. I could approach any Prime Minister, any Minister of Government, any Minister of Sport, any sponsor, without having to clear that with Dr. Lewis. Of course, I will do it in a structured way. I will let him know. I will write a report, Yes. right? Um, when I made the breakthrough, or when the OECS Sports Desk made the breakthrough, with Liad getting a 50% reduction, right. he was informed. He said, go ahead, right? Go and see Captain Foster. Because in them days, you know, to move people from St. Kitts down to Grenada using a normal fare is very high. Yes. Little basketball well, and it's netball it's teams. even worse now. <laughs> right, fine, even worse now. Hmm. So I think the freedom by Dr. Lewis, right, to operate, to go. Yes. You know, I'm not here to do your job or look over your shoulder. You do what you want. You keep me informed, right? And uh, the private sector. The private sector, Ken Boye. Yeah. Ken Boye gave me a running start because the first tournament I had was a tennis tournament where yeah. I opened it to the rest of the Caribbean. Because if we wanted to get private sector money outside of the OECS, we also had to include people from outside the OECS. Outside the I got Trinidad to play. Barbados to play, U.S. Virgin Islands to play, and everybody was put up in private homes. Mm -hmm. The people brought them to the Latok Tennis Center. We got food arranged, donated, mm. and we had tennis. Did you find it a very exciting job? Oh, well, you obviously did. You lasted 12 years in it, right? It so was you very challenging, have, yeah. very challenging. So up in the morning, early, you had to make telephone calls to people who you had to find at home. Mm because it might be difficult to find them at work, especially if they're a civil servant and they're, they're on, on the beat, they're out in the field. Um, it, was a, it was a pressure job. Second was a half marathon I held in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. We had 96 people running, right? People from everybody sent runners, East Caribbean Flower Mills. The next, um, in December, we had our first basketball tournament and I delayed it until Grenada had the elections, the political elections. Yes, yes. And then the basketball um, association started to function, and I made sure that Grenada could play. Yeah, we had a yes. tremendous 4,000 people at Windsor Park. When Eugenia Charles, who is not known to be a great sports person, yes. not that, that, that she might not appreciate mm -hmm. the benefits of sport, when she came, she could not believe what, what it was Dominica versus Antica in the final. And I think she realized, hey, yeah, this thing is this. saying something. Yes. The, the people are responding. Yes. The private sector are responding. It's private sector money, you know. Yes, yes. Right? And, of course, the OECS sports desk took, took none of the money. All the profits went to the Basketball Association. Right. Friends, what is it about? I mean, you can attest, I am sure, to the development of the young mind through sport. And, and I want you to articulate that a bit on, on, on this program because a lot of young people, unfortunately today, do not play a sport. Um, you know, they're not involved in sports. And that's, that's sad, I think. But, you know, just articulate a bit so that the young people looking at this program can understand, and not just them, but their parents can understand the the significance of a sporting uh, discipline, if you want, in the life of, life of a young person? Well, in the early colonial times, before we all became independent, and after independence, um, I would think up to the 70s, nine out of ten boys wanted to play for St. Vincent, wanted to play for the Windwards, wanted to play for the West Indies, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and this probably happens in 
other disciplines. You know, nine out of ten boys wanted to play for St. Vincent in football. Right. You know, uh, the case may be. Or athletics. Want to yeah. represent the girl wanted yeah. to play for netball, want yeah. to mm. follow the traditions of the great relationships that came out of, 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 of the netball world, as, as mm. Gl Gloria Ballantyne will probably know much better than me. But as a society changed, right, um, that, that nine probably came down to five, you know, and people, you know, you know, had options, and the options are growing each and every day. I mean, look at young people now. Everybody's got their head down. They don't talk to each other. Mm. They're texting, yeah. you know. Oh, I, I, I don't know how associations are trying to combat that. I just did an interview during the 2020 with Vice President Cameron. I said, but you know, in Jamaica, you've got track and field doing well. The reggae boys may go to the World Cup. Your cricketers are doing well. How do you how cope? Do you manage that? How yeah. do you battle for the Attention. resource people out there, yeah, yeah. you know? And um, it's, a, it's, it's a constant struggle, yes. you know? My feeling now is there must be a way of... Tr well, young people are not listening to any sports news. Young people are listening to radio stations that play music. Yes. So maybe you need to support the information during that time. Yes. They're not going to listen to Michael Finney. You know, not that he's not saying anything, yeah, but yeah, no, they ain't right. going to chew. Yeah. They, they'll be listening to some heavy music yeah. program in the morning. Right. 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 Um, I am mainly concerned about how we can use sport to cushion the unemployment, to cushion the crime, to stop people from going to drugs, to stop people from drifting. That, is, to me, is more important now. Um, because we're going through a, a phase now where, you know, we, we, we need to reach out to, to, to young people and yes. at least give them an opportunity to save the, the, their own lives. Is there too much of a delink in between the education as it is now, you know, the education system in school and sport? Because certainly when I went through school, you know, sport was very much part of the curriculum, a big part of it, actually, you know. Not just athletics, but cricket, soccer, at least those three. Let's, let's stay at those three for now. Is it that we have delinked it and, and what happens in school today now is just, just the books? Well, there's a battle on between those who are educators yes. and those who are in the sports department. And uh, there's always you know, a, a, a constant battle for more time out of the classroom, you know, what's the benefit of that, um, what you're going to say when the exams come out and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, just recently in St. Lucia, the new Minister of Sport and Youth, Sean Edwards, yes. they've actually met with the Minister of Education and they've signed an MOU yeah. so that they can really have something written down and a cooperation pact where they can get the best of the both worlds. Yes. You know. Well, we're at the end of this third section, so let's pick up in our last segment. I want to talk about one of the major obstacles that you, you've, you overcame. This is one that had to do with your health. And um, we'd, we'd also continue to look at living my dreams. This is Unrendered, and my guest is Joseph Redspera. We'll be into our last segment when we come back from the break. Mm -hmm.